Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the second part of this personal experience from spirits is Stuart discovers the benefits of relationship with God, during which Mary channels Stuart, a behavioral scientist who has been studying Jesus since Jesus was eight years old, who talked with Jesus three times previously and now shares his own experiences of his relationship with God and the differences between progression in natural love and receiving God's love. The session was recorded on the 11th of July, 2018, from 11 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Okay, so let's come to that interesting subject, shall we, of the soulmate? What's, what's going on there? <laughs> I feel a little... I um, feel this is difficult for me to yeah. speak about. Yeah. I feel uncertain. <laughs> well, uncertain about who your soulmate is or...? Uh, Yes, I feel there's many things opening up in me mm -hmm. about this. Because mm -hmm. um, you've been quite close to women a lot of your life in a lot of ways, haven't you? That you would now recognise. I don't know if you would have felt it at the time. but Yes, well, I'm going through a process and again, um, I... I actually feel that my soulmate is a man. Yeah. No, I assume that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and... And how are you finding that process? Difficult to... I think, I think perhaps it's... Immensely difficult because... Um, I mean, there's other issues that I've... That I'm letting go of, I feel, about the, you know, the self-concept that I was heterosexual. And also the male-female interaction type thing and what's oh. natural and what's not and all those other things. Are these things that you're having to confront or...? Well, I think, I think, I think there's many things that I, and again, I feel I'm in a, I, I feel a little awkward speaking about this publicly because I feel like I, I'm... You're going through it. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm not certain about certain things, but yep. what I'm finding so challenging is that I feel emerging within me the, the, the knowledge that my soulmate is a man, mm -hmm. but uh, because some of the biggest pain that I've felt mm. it's almost is with dad. Is with men. Yeah. It's almost as if my wife and women I very much have had a, a, it's quite a dismissive not in a not in a condescending way but just as if there was no um weight or importance put on those exchanges from what i now understand from an emotional perspective mm -hmm. there was no mm -hmm. emotional buzz in me around women because mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. a very young age i i appear to have just um had so much uh investment and pain <laughs> in, in the, the relationship with my father mm. and as i said it it drove the building of my city mm. on the sand mm. that i i honestly feel very very in the throes of quite some deep emotion mm -hmm. about coming to terms with the fact that this may is may be that i i feel i've met someone who i may who may be my soulmate and mm -hmm. i found it very shocking because mm -hmm. I, 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 I had no sense before that moment that it would be a man. Mm -hmm. um, or oh, it's it's difficult, isn't it, to say I had no sense because at times when there's a an emotional awareness or awakening, one realizes there was a growing sense, but it wasn't uh, true. Yeah. Necessarily, it's sort of my, should conscious. we say there's moments of awareness of. It's sort of like there's growing senses, but you're not really yet aware of them, isn't there? And then all of a sudden, yes, you have a situation or a situation that now you go, well, I'm now aware that that's a, yes. there's a feeling there about well, something. It's almost as if the way I experience it is, is as if there's a there's emotions that start I start to have a sense of, but I don't yet understand what they are. Yeah, and yeah. then there's a new awareness or a new event which helps me say, oh, oh. 
I, I was starting to feel that my soulmate might be a man, but until I met this person, I didn't have a, a, a conscious awareness that that's what that tension was that was building in me. Yeah. And when I say tension, it wasn't necessarily a bad tension, but just a, a, a new part of me that I was becoming sensitive to. Yeah. So, so um, the man you've met, um, who you're still internally debating about, shall we say? Yeah, I wouldn't call it a debate. No? I would call it a, an intense... Um, I just feel there's many things that I'm still feeling confronting about emotionally grieving yeah. and yeah, yeah. and i'm afraid to experience no i get that and yeah. i'm working through that fear emotionally and yeah. so uh does that make sense sure, sure, yes. certainly it does I, to to be honest with you though i do feel that most people who meet their soulmate no matter what the gender of their soulmate you there are a lot of confrontational things emotionally you go through because you remember, uh, you might have observed us having a conversation, was it with Sebastian uh, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. or you might have heard about that conversation, but when Sebastian met his soulmate, I think it was Sebastian, he, he said he, he felt revulsion, you know, like, mm -hmm. so that, you know, because of the different emotions that he had within himself about that. I, I, I would say my experience was not revulsion. Yeah, yeah. Rather the contrary. Yeah. And that... Um, but that in itself is confronting. It just yeah. confronted a lot of grief in me. Yeah. And yeah. also because you've lived, uh, historically lived a lot of your life in passionate, less relationships mm. that would have naturally have com yes. confronted uh, those feelings. I yes. think that that is the, the intensity of that experience. Mm. Um, with another person mm. is more frightening for me than my connection with God. Yeah, and I understand why. It's uh, because it, with a person, there's the unpredictability of their action and their behaviour, whereas mm -hmm. with God, once you have that initial relationship starting and you have some faith in God's goodness and character, it's like, you know, it's, it's very predictable that God's always going to be loving with you. Mm -hmm. Whereas when, once you meet your soulmate, that's not always the case where they might not be loving with you. And then how are you going to cope with that if your heart's open to them and so forth? Yes. It's, a, it's a difficult thing to come to terms with for many, for most, I feel, people. Mm -hmm. and, and there's the, the added element of the, the sexual... Uh, uh, desire for them desire and experience mm. uh, of that feeling and mm. that i that's unique to this relate it feels unique now it's it's mm. almost as if before i met him I, I, and his name is matthew yeah um i had no uh I had no intense sexual uh, emotion mm -hmm. for my entire life. Mm -hmm. And having that is so... Um, meeting him is such a strange mixture of joy, sorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's as if the, the, it's excitement and then that triggers some sorrow sometimes and then there's the... the sexual aspect yeah. that also triggers then some so it's the fear of the intensity i suppose yeah so you could say it triggers excitement joy fear sorrow so in, in in i suppose it illustrates well doesn't it how um the soulmate relationship can actually uh trigger a lot of emotion that we've never ever really experienced before which is the reason why on earth when people meet so much frequently they are may have major challenge and, mm. and run away from the relationship yes mm. and, it, and it feels like a deepening of my emotional experience mm. in in a yes mm. i see mm. i see that i see that there must mm, I see the, that the point of this progression, that the point that one reaches where one meets
meets their soulmate. I suppose it's hard for me to imagine and again I feel hesitant to discuss it because I'm so much in a learning process sure. but hmm. it's hard to, for me to imagine that I could have opened up to the depth of this sort of experience of myself emotionally hmm. just solely in my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Logic tells me that can't be the case but... Well no, oh, I, I, I don't know if I agree with you there. I feel if you consider the soulmate, the, the soulmate, you, you're two halves of the same person. So when you meet your soulmate, it's like you're becoming aware of the other half of yourself. The, 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 and frequently it's large parts of yourself that you're still in denial of. So na naturally, naturally, when you start connecting with the other half of yourself, your bond with God is going to be much stronger than mm. it was prior to then, because it's only coming from half of you. Mm, okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, sort of. Uh, I mean, my Before. my awareness of myself yes. was immensely altered through my connection with God. As will be your awareness of yourself as you connect with your soulmate. Mm. And so is, is one able to become fully aware of oneself solely in that relationship with God? Or is there... Is there a, it's like a, a throwing open of even more intense experience through the meeting of this other person? Yes, if you what think about it case? from a scientific pr principle, if, if the two ha if you think of your two halves as, as having an emotional barrier between them, Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's really what's happening, isn't it? When, when before you meet your soulmate, there must be an emotional barrier that is between you. Otherwise, you would have already met, right? So there's got to be an emotional barrier of some kind. And usually that emotional barrier is on both of your on both sides. Okay. So the emotional barrier prevents the flow of full emotion within the soul as a complete unit. Yes. So, so... So the relate, you can also see that the relationship with God, when you when one half of the soul establishes the relationship with God, it's establishing a relationship with God through its own emotional response to God, yes. and its own you know desire to have God respond to it. Mm -hmm. But that emotion can't be shared with the other half of the soul because there's a barrier. Yes. And the barrier prevents the sharing or the or the amplification of that emotion. Yes. Right? Until the two and this is why God is so interested in every person meeting their soulmate and working through the emotions that prevent us from doing so, because God knows that God wants a relationship with the complete soul. But you as one half is not are not yet a complete soul. Yes. So so while God enjoys the relationship with you as one half. God's goal in the end is to ensure that God has a relationship with the complete soul as a, as a unit rather than two, individual, two halves that see themselves as individuals. Yes. And so you can see from a scientific perspective, the, emotion, the emotions of meeting your soulmate and going through these intense emotions are a key part not only of your bond with your soulmate, but a key part of your bond with God. Uh, so you are saying then that this intensity of emotion that I feel when I can be in the company of Matthew, yes. that is a furthering of my emotional opening that God has designed to occur on the meeting of my soulmate. That's right. So God has built it that way, that mm -hmm. there are aspects of myself that I become more aware of aware of and i gain more emotional connectivity to as soon as i open up to myself and you'll need to also come to accept yes yes just like you've had to come to accept what god's telling you about you your half so you could think of it now up to now as god's been telling you things about you your half which is not really you it's half of you so god's been telling you about the half of you you accept and but also is it that God has been telling me things about me yeah. but then when I meet Matthew I feel there's more things about me not just about him but about me 
that, that you haven't I can feel now that's or, right. or I'm afraid of feeling or well both isn't yes. it yeah both that's what I mean both yes. is usually it's the both. case isn't it initially yeah. so so yes and God's designed it that way because it's like there's sort of like processes of personal awareness, isn't there? There's, you, you know, you were first in, you were, you were intellectually aware, but you had very little emotional awareness when I met you. Yes. Now you're going through a process of personal emotional awareness of your half of the soul. Yes. But then there's also going to obviously have to be at some point in the future a personal emotional awareness. So your half being personally emotional aware of the whole soul. Mm. not just your half mm. right so that that's obviously something that has to happen in order for you to become a fully functioning fully aware complete soul with your other half mm. and god's designed sort of these processes or periods of awareness it's sort of like a growing person but it, but it's but it's not a it, it's not a growing it's a growing two people eventually that are aware they're one yes and the process of becoming aware you're one is a very interesting process because it's in some ways it's almost like losing your in, in, concept of in, your own self as an individual but gaining the concept of yourself and your soulmate being the individual <laughs> i think and i think i smile because i think uh you, you're now speaking this stage beyond where i'm at yes i mean yes. i i'm not i think I think there's certain emotions that I'm going through now Certainly. that I can see. Would I don't feel revulsed by the concept you're explaining, yeah. but I can see that I'm. I still feel that I'm experiencing more and more of myself as one half at this point, and that that is overwhelming for me at the moment. Um, and the, and the key really, uh, Stuart, is to continue allow. Like we meet our soulmate at a point when from god's perspective we're basically in a state where we can deal with the emotions about the process of meeting our soulmate mm. and so, and most of the time we don't feel we're ready mm. right that that's it that is a reality mm -hmm. the the key is to learn to trust god more you know even more have, have even more faith in god that obviously god knows you're ready otherwise you wouldn't have met and God knows you're capable of dealing with the emotions that are coming up. And as long as you trust God more that this is the way for your future to go, mm. then all of these particular issues will be resolved. Yes, I, I do feel yeah. my faith is such that yeah. that's, that, that's, that, that's underway. I, yeah. I, just, I still, it's not that I feel now embarrassed to, to display my emotion or anything. I, I just feel no, there's this scientific part of me that feels a little reticent to to uh, discuss things that I, that I don't yet fully understand. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah. I gather that. But I myself and Mary have been through those yes. processes, so there's some safety in the discussion. Yes. I do, I, yeah. and I should humbly acknowledge that. Yeah, and and so it, yeah, it is a um, like coming to an awareness that you are not one in yourself you know you're not one mm. being in within yourself mm -hmm. is a very emotionally uh, uh, overwhelming process mm. and so any person i feel who says they've met the soulmate and it's wonderful uh and i'm not saying it's not wonderful but i'm saying to say <laughs> that it's wonderful without them having gone through any of these emotions yes is obviously living in a in a place of delusion you know what i mean <laughs> yes mm. Mm. Yeah. thank you thank you for saying that i mean yeah. as i said I, I have it's a strange situation between myself and matthew because mm. i feel so much excitement um uh but all these other feelings yeah. as well there's a lot of so what fear is matthew in fear that i thought was gone from me yeah no i get you <laughs> yeah, yeah. He he's actually in a similar condition than myself. Oh, that's great! Myself. So yeah. he'd be going through the same emotions. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I feel very blessed that he, that I, I because I I, ha, I have investigated a little and I know that that's not always the case. But, no. Yeah. But each of us is is really moving between the third and fifth, and at times I feel almost in the seventh, just through my relationship with God. God. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
but really um, I, I'm steady now here yeah. in the fifth, yeah. but there's still moments like when that feeling, that, that, that overwhelming kind of fear emerges in me where yeah. I feel uh, it's, it's a strange thing to describe where, where I, I'm suddenly uh, embroiled in that emotion and so uh, from a technical perspective I'm, I'm in, a, in a, a lesser state because yeah. my connection with God is not as, um, well, I don't know how to describe it. But again, it, I don't know well, how to describe it. Well, it's not as free, is it, in it's, that state? Yes. You, you've got to go through the emotion. for you, There's a process of awareness of emotion, isn't there, too, that you're going through, which is, Absolutely. you know, initially you might be in a certain state like the fifth sphere, and then you become aware there's specific emotions, in this case regarding your soulmate, mm -hmm. and then then you've got to get to the stage where you feel them. Mm -hmm. And when you're feeling them, obviously, a lot of times then you, you feel a lot, in a lot worse condition then. Mm -hmm. And then and then as you're feeling them and go through them, you, you know, that a lot of stuff comes out there. And, yes. and then, it, then, you, then when you come back to your fist fear, you go, oh, actually... I'm probably in a higher state now because yes. I've gone through that process. That's that's mm. a good description. Mm. Another way that I that I feel about it is is that um, it's almost like when I met you, I was um, like a, uh, not even a tightly closed bud, but the the, the hard um, layer that goes. Oh, that in which the the bud forms. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that I was underneath that hard layer when it came to my openness to God. Yeah. And then how it feels to me as I as I make progress is that I I open, mm. I open more and I open more and I get to to feel and have a sense of how constricted I was in the previous state. Mm. And there's an opening. And so in this state where I, where I I would say I'm rightly in the fifth sphere. I mm -hmm. feel quite loose and open as opposed to how I have been at any point in the yes. past. Yeah. But then when these interactions happen, and I feel all joyous and confident in the way that I was mm -hmm. speaking with you earlier. Mm -hmm. And then when I have these interactions with Matthew, I feel all on my wobbly legs again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, it's uh, all new. It's all uh, new. Yeah, it's it? all new. And <laughs> yeah. so many issues that I'm confronting and 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 I can feel, as, uh, while I go through that emotion, or as I'm coming into experiencing those emotions, so the emotions are uh, triggered, and it's almost as if there's a constriction again in that openness with mm. God mm. until I until I let it all out, and then I'm open wider again. open. Yeah. Yes. No, that's a good probably description of it. Mm. It's a, I often feel of it sort of sort of like getting you get when you get stretched. It stretched that much feels stretched mm. but then when you're used to being stretched that much mm. now it's normal mm. but now when you stretch that much it's stretched <laughs> <laughs> you know it's, it, you, it's like god's trying to continually stretch us so as we approach the infinite of course that's going to be the way it is isn't it and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you've sort of got to get used to that process in a, as an emotional process yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Thank mm. you so much for this w w wild adventure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good, good adventure, isn't it? Yes. I think I think the person that needs to be thanked the most is God, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it's amazing the way he's it, it, like it, it. It's such a clever creation, isn't it? So you've got yeah. to marvel at absolutely. Uh, you know the the absolute like the literally absolute intelligence of God yes. to create. You know these kind of things is it's just a remarkable and it's an endless mm. discovery in in what is like god's always trying to help us to not feel it's mysterious but it's just a, <laughs> yes one understands why it's often referred to as mysterious yes um, yeah. because there is so much that we cannot know at at any point there's so much that we Until aren't you go even through. exactly mm. A, mm. aware of the possibilities of, mm. and then we make a, sh a change, and and then suddenly we know things that we didn't yeah. know, and yeah. and and 
at some point I know I will return to my study of yourself. <laughs> uh, we may have to to do the union state transition. <laughs> yes, yeah. I can't, yeah. That's mm. way beyond me at this point. And mm. I, I feel that for the first time in my life, I'm, I'm alive and I have you to thank for that. Mm. Uh, and it's the irony is not lost on me that I spent so many years observing you without benefiting mm. and mm. the the personal interactions i've had with you and and i do know there was bravery on my part to have that mm. interaction and also to engage with what you suggested mm. but those things have brought me to life and i mm. and i am very grateful mm. Could I uh, have a little bit of background about Matthew? You must know a little bit about his life. What, what was he like? What did he do on earth? I feel so <laughs> much that I don't want to speak. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to speak about it. That's fine. Um, <laughs> we can leave it for another day. <laughs> I, it feels all so um, overwhelming. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you. Is, is that okay? That we... Of course yes. it's okay. You're allowed to do whatever you like, as you I, know. I, I, you've been so generous with me that yeah, I, yeah. I always want to return the No, no, no. Um, you, don't, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> there's no, no, there's nothing you owe. <laughs> um, I'm sure some of our listeners are going to start asking questions <laughs> at some point. So, so uh, the best thing, he, 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 when you get through it, we'll talk again. Yes, he, he lived, if I say very briefly, he lived uh, at a similar time to myself yeah. on the earth. Uh, he he was actually French, and so I haven't said his name in the proper French no, pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I just get butterflies talking about him. So <laughs> yeah, I well, feel uh, like... well, you can remember from observation how I felt when I met Mary yes, again. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, you know that uh, I was all uh, well. Yeah, not very, not very, <laughs> not very what I'd call, um, you know. Well, a a accurate in any of my expressions, I suppose. <laughs> you weren't uh, very verbose. No. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, I uh, yeah. do know you had butterflies too. And I, I, it's so strange. I'm He's not even here, but I just feel butterflies <laughs> talking about him. So. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and, and remain so, which is also the remarkable thing. Yeah. What? Um, I, 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 yes, I, yeah. so much to feel about yeah. this. Uh, unique relationship and yeah the whole creation of the human soul is is just a remarkable mm. creation mm. like you can see why god sees it as the pinnacle of yeah. his creation yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, it's been wonderful having a chat with you again anyway Matthew. and with uh, you uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you and mm. I'll try to keep you informed on my life. You don't have to try even <laughs> we'll, I'm sure we'll have chats here and there um, <laughs> and um, you know I, I think um, in time, some of our listeners who hear these series of discussions might have questions. And so mm. at one time, we might take the opportunity if they do, um, we'll get together and ask some of those questions that, that they'd like to ask as well. Yeah, mm. that would be fun. Mm. 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 <laughs> yeah, but it's been great. It's been great uh, feeling how you've changed over the last Thank few you. months of Earth time. It must feel, feel like a long time for you now. Yes, yeah. a very long time. And mm. I do want to mention that there's there's greater knowledge and awareness that I have gained about yourself. And I mentioned, I brought up my study of you earlier, but mm -hmm. it, in this process, I have gained incredible insights into what it is you are undertaking. Mm -hmm. And the more that I open up in my relationship with God and to myself, the more... Um, the more I understand about yourself and I would like at some point to return and talk about that with you, what I now understand. And I suppose really mm. well, I convey my appreciation. Well, maybe the next few conversations we have will be firstly about me and then next about you again. <laughs> 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 see how it goes <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh yeah I, I sort of feel that that would probably be informative to people who are listening as well because mm -hmm. obviously the concept of earth on earth about what all the 14 are attempting to do 
is quite different to what obviously is going on and and it'd be nice to um to have a spirit's perspective mm. on those things uh, and and mm. again my understanding is as yet incomplete but mm-hmm. I, I and i haven't been studying as much as just learning mm. uh, and my own experience then informs other things that i that i've been told yes and i gain an appreciation for just what it is that you are undertaking and what you face from uh, spiritual perspective and mm. emotional and mm. uh, perspective and in your relationship with God and mm. and um, I feel very uh, well I, I think I've expressed you know mm. the that I'm humbled and and I also feel quite emotional about that at times as mm. well um, yeah yeah, yeah it, it is uh, something that you know I'm not probably <laughs> I sort of feel at the moment, you know, I'm struggling with different things myself and, um, you know, but I, but I am becoming more and more aware of why it's such a struggle. Mm. <laughs> and, and it is, you know, obviously there's a lot and, and you would probably see that a lot more clearly now, all the mm-hmm. spirits that surround us and mm-hmm. so forth. And it, it, is, uh, it is quite a difficult process uh, doing, dealing with these kind of things on earth compared to dealing with them in a, in a lovely, yes. <laughs> pretty environment, isn't it? And yes. uh, it's so I'm hmm. so supported here by every aspect of my experience. Yes. As long as I have that, that thing I spoke of earlier, this um, desire and willingness to love or to develop love, hmm. I, I face many times, have faced many times and continue to face where there isn't that willingness or that there isn't that love within me already in certain mm. areas. But as long as I'm stepping forward uh, in that process, I'm so supported in every way. Mm. And that is not the case on earth. No, mm. no, no, it could be, but obviously has, things have to change on earth for it to be. Mm. And I, I think um, I, what I love a lot about the spirit world is the, the way that there's this sort of instant feedback about what's going on mm-hmm. if you mm-hmm. wish to be aware mm. and you know, of course it always gets down to that quite mm. large if but um <laughs> yeah. but even this the, the beautiful thing of you know making those emotional changes and then being having a new home and things mm-hmm. like that and you know that's a whole other series of discussions we could ask you about you know, what is your home like compared to what you were like in the second sphere and mm. you know what you yeah. know just, <laughs> It hardly, it, it, all those other things seem so much more uh, important. Yeah, but what yes, we've... there's so much to share about And there's all things. this, I, I, I suppose in some ways when you've got this relationship with God that you look upon them all as sort of superfluous to the whole process almost. It, that's exactly <laughs> how I feel. But, yeah. but there is a large amount of impact that does have on you to a degree because you can see the progress you're making and you, and mm. you experience, mm. your environment reflects the condition and so therefore measurement of things is a lot easier and measurement of progress is a lot easier and so forth and and sometimes when you're living through it you don't realize it so much and you sort of see it as a bit superfluous but Mm -hmm. the reality is that it it all is substantially designed Mm -hmm. to help you continue make this progress that you where god's leading you forward you know Mm -hmm. and and this is what I find, uh, and in this, in the fir- in the first century, I found it less difficult because of that injury regarding worth. But in this life on Earth, uh, it's much more difficult. Uh, I finding because it, because the injury about worth that every person on Earth does or has experienced mm. has a significant impact upon our ability on Earth to measure our own progress. Yes, and uh, and so that you know that obviously is a significant thing that needs to be changed on earth for things to have substantial change here. Hmm. Yes, and while in your first century experience you didn't have that problem, you've certainly taken it on. Yeah, I feel I've probably (laughs) got the worst of humanity's problem with it now. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Time to go. Mary's tiring, so we better let you go. And, And thanks for your time again. And and uh, we we'll enjoy your, our conversations with you and thank you for them. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye for now. Yeah. It's just so lovely. <laughs> yeah. It's real nice doing that. I feel 
I feel so privileged to get to hear their, to, it's not hearing their stories, it's feeling how they feel yeah. and their willingness to share their story with me, yeah. uh, through me, you know, yeah. how I feel. Because they're sharing their story through their feelings as well. And yeah. so the beauty of being a medium in that situation yes. is that you get to feel all their feelings too. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't think about it at the time. No, and often, as you know, I get, I, I get resistive to it because I don't want to feel certain feelings in myself. But mm. um, I just think Stuart's, well, really, it's his story, isn't it? It's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And as soon as I asked the question about his girl, I realised that it wasn't a girl. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, so that's a bit of... <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It, it was funny too, um, because I, as soon as he said where he was in his progress at the beginning of the discussion, I immediately opened up to, oh, wow, you know, he must have met his soulmate. And, and I was trying to feel like I'm yeah. kind of in the background sometimes trying to feel while he's chatting to you and yeah. trying to feel where, what's going on with the silent thing. But he, it, it wasn't obvious. It's obviously yeah. really um, raw. Raw for him. Yeah, yeah. raw. New, new and raw. Yeah. And yeah. 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 So the fifth sphere, can you tell us a bit about like, um, is see, it typical uh, to be going through that stuff during the fifth sphere? Yes. Yep. Yeah, typical. Um, because it's not, it's, uh, see, most people think of soulmate, when you talk about soulmate on earth, most people think about soulmate as a relationship mm -hmm. between two people. Mm -hmm. um, but, but see, when you, as you saw from our discussion with Stuart, it was, well, it was like, and as our listeners would have saw, it, he's having going through a process from the second sphere to the fifth sphere is a lot about becoming self-aware. Mm -hmm who you are as an individual, who, you know, what your desires are, what your passions are, what mm. your personality is, mm. uh, what your nature is that God, that God, and God's during this process, if you do it with God, God's sharing all of those things with you. Mm. So God's sharing, this is what your nature is. And, and because it resonates so much with what you know to be your nature that you never thought anybody else would ever get, yeah. it's a very powerful, mm -hmm. but, but a personal process. Mm. By the time you get to your fifth sphere, you've gone through a fair bit of that. Yeah. So, so you're now starting to enjoy your own nature and enjoy mm -hmm. your own personality and you feel the acceptance that God has for your nature and personality and so forth. But you're yet to discover the other half of yourself and mm -hmm. therefore a half of your nature is undiscovered. But isn't so, it true that the, like, soulmates share the same nature so it's not necessary that like i've got well, half no, the nature it's and not you've got strictly the other half. true okay. because because there are parts of the nature that is it that that is the expression of the other part in the expression of the other half mm -hmm. so sort of like so while the whole soul has its nature yeah that is the same yes because of the barriers that exist emotionally between the two halves of the soul as your growing yeah you you sort of start seeing it as a whole another another voyage of self-discovery when you meet your soulmate yeah. it's another voyage of self-discovery yeah. that's just as and mo a lot of times even more emotionally confronting than the one you've just been through yes so so for most people um it's not just about having a relationship see most people when you talk about it think it's about just having a relationship with the other, with with a person who's the same as you basically yeah. Yeah. or similar to you and that's not what it's like at all because you're discovering a whole heap of new things about the person and about yourself and, yeah. and, about, and therefore about them too and and you're starting to realize that it's about it's, this is about the other half of you which is still you yes. and, and and so your whole concept of self-identity also is majorly challenged so it's a psychological process mm. of confronting your self-identity yeah. uh, it's not just an emotional process of oh let's uh i've met my son let's now go and have some fun type of thing <laughs> <laughs> you know no. so well, and that, i mean i think i can speak from my own experience in meeting you mm. like i really feel that the biggest challenge has been um the fact that you express aspects 
of our nature that I've either been judging, mm -hmm. uh, just numb to, yep. or that no one else is like um, uh, or reflected and now someone else is reflecting what feels to me to be really... Mm. Uh, but to me, that's only half of it, or, or less than half of it, even. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I wasn't finished, but yeah. 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 Um, if you uh, think about when we met in the first century, there was that same confrontation. Yes. Um, of, you know, recognizing somebody else having the nat same nature as you, and yeah. So th that I feel like there's that, but then there is. I do relate to what you said about. Uh, a different expression of the same nature, like a different... Uh, uh, it's not even that. that. That's even less than half of it, I feel. Yeah. It's also about what appears to be the loss of your identity as a unique individual, which is where we have most of our attachments. And I obviously... And you've yet to go through that <laughs> yourself I now. Am, but I am obviously... Um, that's very obvious to me because... Um, there's so many issues in the way that especially um, relationships happen and between men and women where there's so much fear of domination and control um, and men are afraid of women doing it and women are afraid of men doing it that 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 thing is like it brings up all of those emotions and it's very hard to describe and that's why you know even Stuart in the discussion he was saying yeah I don't know if I get what you're saying because it is emotionally very hard to understand mm. but but the best way I can liken it to is the two halves have to give up their concept of self in order to embrace the concept of their whole mm. and um and that obviously, that process begins where Stuart is in the fifth sphere mm. and continues until it's completed in the 36th sphere. So there's a lot of, of happenings yeah. in between those two states. You know, obviously it's a huge process. It's not just a tiny little process. So the, the first part of the process is what he's going through now, mm. which is this first part of just discovering a lot of things about yourself you didn't know mm. and, and by meeting your soulmate, mm -hmm. you know, it's to, it's, it's still discovering a whole heap of things about you that you didn't know existed in you yes. or as a part yes. of you. And that, that's the beginning of the process. And, and the, um, would you say also the, uh, the knowledge, gaining the emotional knowledge that you are one half of a whole. You still don't let go of the uh, yeah, well, concept you, of self as individual, but... Well, you don't let go of that until yeah. you transition between the 35th and the 36th sphere. Yeah. But there's some recognition emotionally that you are linked in some way. That's right. Yeah. So okay. you start you start with this, well, it's confronting awareness. It's emotionally confronting awareness that begins in the fifth, usually. Mm -hmm. Not not always, like as we, met, we you know, we're, we're talking to Sebastian, for him it was the seventh. Mm -hmm. You know, some, sometimes it happens later. Mm. But, but usually it begins in the fifth if someone's progressing on mm -hmm. the way, you know, mm -hmm. in God's way. I wonder if with Sebastian it's um, because he's, he is going through so much about his dad and his you soulmate. You Stuart? Oh, yeah, what did I say? You said Sebastian. I'm oh, sorry. I wonder yep. if with Stuart. Yeah. Yep. Um, because he's going through so much in relationship to being... To his dad. To his dad, group yep. of men, and his soulmate happens to be a man. I wonder if that opens him... Would you say that opens him more strongly to that soulmate? Certainly. More Cer rapidly. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. He, he also will have issues to do with, with women, of course, mm. because their intergender issues all play out in the soulmate relationship in some way, whether your soulmate's of the same gender or a different gender mm -hmm. um, when they're on Earth, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting because we, we only really have two genders on Earth, but the reality is the soulmate relationship is all about just two halves of one being mm. so it's not about gender really it's about two halves of one person yeah and and the character and nature of that one being and this is why it's so psychologically confronting mm. um so so while most people on earth don't know about and can't even consider that or imagine it because the reality is you have to go through so many things mm. emotionally 
to understand it even in, at its inception. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that's just the beginning of the process. So you could say by the time you hit the fifth sphere, you're now, you're, the, you're like this far apart. I'll do it in the big view. <laughs> this far apart, you're this far apart, but you're now aware that you're two halves of one whole. Yeah. And then from that point to getting to be like that, which mm -hmm. is one whole mm -hmm. without even uh, any semblance of separation mm -hmm. is a process that takes another like large amount of time and like from from myself it was it was it took me to that it took me to become aware it took me I was still on earth when I became aware of you being my yeah. other half and and I you know I was in around about the same fifth sphere that mm -hmm. I could start feeling my other half not not yet meeting her but as soon as I met you I knew who you were mm -hmm. So I was aware, you know, but when I met you, I was in the uh, eighth sphere at the time mm. um, when I met you and, and I left Earth around the ninth or the tenth sphere. But, um, but we were still apart because mm. of both halves of us being apart, but also because uh, I had yet to go through a whole heap of things to join as well. It took from there for, for the both of us to get from there to the union condition. It took 2,000 years mm. in comparison to, you know, 50 or 60 years for both of us to become at one with God. Mm. So, so um, you know, the process of this whole soulmate discovery is a much longer uh, drawn out process because it, it, it's, a, it, it's so complex emotionally, mm -hmm. but it's also very complex with regard to allow the allowance of the flow of emotions so that the other half's emotion becomes your own. And, and is your own. <clears throat> so what I hear you describing is that there's a number of things that happen in this soulmate uh, relationship through you could progression. Say stages in it, I suppose stages. you could say. Mm. There's there's the issues with uh, really it's acceptance and allowance of one's own nature, yes. which is kind of heightened when upon meeting the yes, soulmate, as long as you're open in some way to that soulmate. And most people aren't. No. So, so some so people meet their soulmate and it, it's not even really confronting. It doesn't even register many oh, times. Is it confronting it's though? It's rare. It's rare. So because there's already an existing connection, there might be... Uh, as there's an awareness of some... Well, it's, it's difficult to say because, uh, you know, again... The injuries on Earth are so pervasive mm -hmm. that that soulmates can meet and walk past them each mm -hmm. other, not even having any level of, sort of, of reaction uh, reaction about attraction. Yeah. Mate, and sometimes I observe because of that confrontation with nature, it's almost as if soulmates have an aversion from each other. Many times because yeah. they are so resisting their own nature, yeah. and it's it, they don't want to be around someone who's kind of. Yeah, From and, and that's the kind of feeling that, that even Sebastian had in the seventh sphere. Mm. So, so I can't even remember Sebastian's yeah, so story. So, if yeah. someone goes back to that conversation, yeah. they'll see that. But, yeah. um, but you know, when a, when soulmates meet on Earth, you know, frequently they do because the yeah. soul is still drawn behind the scenes, whether you're aware or not. Mm. So it's all drawn. Frequently they do meet, but usually by that stage, there's so many emotional injuries. Yeah. Uh, that are that are acting out in each in each half. Yes. That usually a lot of the times there's very little awareness, other than the fact that there might be some level of friendship or attraction. Uh -huh. um, and even then, sometimes that isn't even there. No. Um, because of the injuries. So, so, so the first stage you could say is getting yeah. rid of the injuries. That's the first stage. Yes. The and second stage is becoming aware. Of yeah. your own nature and your own and accepting that nature and personality, because really yeah. you can't have much of a connection with the other half of you unless you have an acceptance of y your, your own nature. Your own nature, and you won't have an acceptance of your own nature while you have the injuries. So, yes. so you can see the injuries have to be dealt with first. Yeah. Then there's the acceptance of your own nature and your personality, and the embracing of it. You, you've yes. got to live it. You know, yeah. you can't just say, "Yeah, that's what I'm like," but never live it. You yes. know, you've got to live in harmony with it in truth. So, so there's the acceptance and the love of that. You've got yeah. to come to love that yes. about yourself. And like live yourself like in a in an active way. Yeah, without any consciousness or self consciousness or worry about what other people think of you being this way. Yes. Yeah, so that, yeah. that that's a that's the voyage. You could say that's the voyage of self discovery, which is. Uh, 
uh, but of, the soulmate of your, re- of your half of your yeah. half but yeah. the soulmate interaction i suppose what it felt like with Stuart is meeting his soulmate was like taking that to the next level that that part of it yeah journey. well he's going through now what you'd classify as the injury based process related to the other half so what what happens now so so you go first process through all of your injury based process relating to your half mm-hmm. then you accept your half to a degree mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. but there's a whole injury-based process that is still there mm-hmm. that's preventing you from being with or or accepting your other half. So now, as soon as you meet your other half, you start going through that usually. Mm-hmm. So you go through that. Mm-hmm. Then there's the emotion, the the awareness of who your other half is, of course, uh, that happens during that process. It yes. begins with usually meeting them, and then you become aware yeah. uh, through the release release of the injuries. Yes. Now you're aware they're your other half. Yeah. But now there's a whole heap of things both of you must choose to do together mm-hmm. if you're ever going, going to become a whole. Mm-hmm. And so two of those things that you mentioned were is basically giving up the emotional belief that you are a separate entity and coming to emotionally perceive yourself as one whole unit. Yes. Even if separated by bodies. Well, you don't. You don't. You don't uh, finally complete that until you get rid of the bodies. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, no. I, I'm saying you don't. When you do complete that, you don't even see the bodies as separate. It's sort of, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like okay. when 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 you and I are in the union state. Um, my memory of it is that we, you know, we when we create a body, we create a body. If it's a female body or a male body, yep. I still see it as my body. Yes. But it, but it doesn't mean I, my half is a female no uh, my half still a masculine expression yes. but we don't even see it as that we're one whole you know thing. yeah so, i get that i feel yeah, that too yeah, but sorry. that's once we're in the union state before that state we're still attached to a spirit body and well, that, no and we're also still attached to a self-concept body. of individuality yes. that doesn't it doesn't consider the whole so you, really what you're saying is from from the fifth sphere right until the 36th sphere you're in a process of gradually changing your self-concept yes in, to become a, a, a true conception of a whole and once you do that then you finally it's finally solid to 100 percent. then you lose the bodies and you you well, don't you don't have to lose the bodies no so but there's yeah. no, there's no yeah. the soul's merging happens in the universe that contains the soul not in the physical realm so yes you true. don't have to lose the bodies it just and in fact you don't lose the bodies our original bodies are still expressing themselves if you like in the spirit world this is mm-hmm. why people in the spirit world can recognize us but mm-hmm. um but it, but we don't see it as individual bodies. Yes. Yeah, you don't. Yes. Mm. So so there's that aspect, and there was another aspect though that I can't remember now yeah, that so, you had mentioned. Yeah, there's this deep psychological aspects relating to who you are as an yep. individual that have to be given up in order to for the unit, the whole soul, to recognise itself as an individual. Yes, and, and and then of course then there's the self discovery of. The, the whole soul as an individual oh, that has not yet begun. That's right. So that has to happen. That's right. And the fourth <laughs> element that you had mentioned was the sharing and exchanging of feelings. But, but even you get to the stage where you no longer see it as a sharing or exchanging yeah. because yeah. in the whole, as a whole soul, you now, it's your emotion, it's, yes. it's your feelings as yes. a whole soul. Yes. You don't see it as a sharing or exchanging. But when you're in Stuart's uh, condition, you start seeing it, and you and above there, you start seeing it as, as an exchange or a, or an amplification or a flow of emotion between the two halves. That's how you see it. Yes, and yeah. I, and I suppose I'm kind of asking slash making the point that that is an important part of the development of getting to this unified state. That right. must that exchange must well, start happening. All of these stages are important because they are all. That's, I was trying you know, to highlight like, four stages. Yeah, yeah, it's like growing. It's like it's like a growing child, you know. They they have a, they're a they're a baby, then they're a toddler, then they're you know then they're a young child, and then they a teenager, and then they become an adult. So mm-hmm. There's these stages of life, mm-hmm. and you could say that there are these stages of life in the development of the soul. Yes, and you know, and some of those stages would be unnecessary if we didn't have emotional injury. Yeah, and other parts of the stages are 
are always going to be a necessary part of the process, whether we have emotional injury or not. Yeah. 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 So some of so, what Stu is going through now is related to the emotional injury. Yeah. And some of what he's going through isn't related to the emotional injury, but is actually related to this whole concept and identity and stuff that, of yeah. discovery. Got gotcha. you. Mm. Yeah. But in relation to the soulmate relationship, if I just recap, in order to commence that relationship we must, and continue to develop it, we have to have the willingness to release emotional injury personally. Mm -hmm and develop the desire to experience and express ourselves uh, our and love that personality expression in our nature. discover experience and express our true personality in nature mm. we also have to um, begin to work on giving up uh, or we do begin to we don't have to we do begin to to give up this concept of ourselves as as a, an individual and come to see the two halves as an individual mm -hmm. And, and, and you could say it's not yet emotional, is it? It's not completed emotionally because not just, until the union. It's just almost like uh, the way it began for me in the first century was an intellectual concept of awareness. Yes. Like through the conscience mechanism, God told me that this was the future. Yes. So, so once you release enough of your emotions about you know the opposite gender, or you've gotten rid of the, you know the concepts that are around you. In my case, mm. you know, in, in the first century, we had the a lot of terrible concepts about gender relationships yeah. and once you once you remove those from yourself and 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 have a connection with god god can now share with you no this is what a relationship really should look like mm. so you now start getting some awareness but you haven't gone through the emotions of it you know, no you but but that is yeah. a process that you go through isn't it mm. beyond the fifth it starts to become an emotional changing of awareness that yeah. isn't complete until the 36, but we are emotion. We are working on that that whole yeah. time emotionally. And it's very confrontational emotionally. Yeah. 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 It's it's more confrontational as as Stuart, point, as Stuart pointed out that it's more confrontational than his relationship with God, and that is true. It mm. is mm. because now you are starting to engage your relationship with God through the whole soul rather than the half so yeah. so that's a much more confrontational process yeah. emotionally yeah. than you just doing it through your half. your half and then on the other side of things um you're also now going through an emotional experience where you're you're losing who you believed you were yeah and and gaining uh you know a much greater belief of mm. who you actually are mm. uh, and then on top of that there's the actual building of uh, emotional so feelings with the other half. Could we just finish that with the recap? Yeah, yeah. that's the fourth aspect of what begins to develop and yeah. grow and change is the sharing of emotions between both halves. So me experiencing myself and expressing that with you and you experiencing yourself and expressing that and the receiving and giving of emotion. Yeah, yeah. to such an, a point that in the end you, you don't even see it as that. Yes. Yeah. But then there's also how that affects your relationship with God because the whole soul is capable of a much deeper relationship with God than half the soul is. Yeah, so, so mm. but do you see that as something that, like that's a truth scientifically, is that something that you are emotionally developing before the state of union as yeah. well as soon yeah. as you meet your soulmate it's almost like there's this sort of uh and and, and again it, it depends how connected to god you are when you meet your soulmate but but if you're connected to god when you meet your soulmate you start becoming aware that that this person this other half is actually you just expressed differently mm -hmm. And so your whole concept of self is completely like blown out of the water. Yeah. But but also that that without this other half, a complete relationship with God. Mm. Where, when I say complete, or you could say a further developed relationship with God, at some point is going to become impossible because mm -hmm. it requires both halves mm -hmm. in order to be completed. As I said to Stuart, God wants a relationship with the whole soul, not mm -hmm. just as as. as as a self-aware entity, mm -hmm. not just both halves of the soul as self-aware entities. Mm -hmm. So, so, and really, true self-awareness doesn't complete until the union condition, anyway. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, that's why it's pretty overwhelming at the beginning, and anybody who comes to turn, you know, anybody who goes through it, 
even if they're living with their soulmate at the time, mm-hmm. anybody who actually goes through it will find that everything changes yeah. when you start going through that. And I, I don't feel that anyone on earth has actually been through that yet, um, except for our experience and perhaps more my experience than yours, even in the first century. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose I, I have certain memories about the first century where I could had a feeling of us as a as a whole mm. you know obviously mm. it's not complete but mm. you know mm. yeah uh, as 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 a shared identity I suppose is mm. what, you, what we're really talking but about. But you still in some ways saw us as individuals and whereas I, I did I, yeah. I was less yeah. you know less like yeah. that yeah um but uh yeah and that's one of the reasons why we come to huh to to hopefully hopefully, hopefully. In, in this great experiment, <laughs> hopefully experiment. demonstrate what that looks like mm. when you're in two bodies, because mm. um, that mm. you know that's never been demonstrated. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. on Earth, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's never been really demonstrated in the spirit world either. Really, it's like it's because it's impossible to demonstrate it in any physical way. Mm. So how how do we can you... just demonstrate? Uh, well, the soul the soul being present on Earth in that union state with a demo, with an outward demonstration represented physically is going to be much more powerful than just talking about it, it as a state. Absolutely. Mm. How do you see that is differing from us in spirit bodies in the spirit world? Obviously, well, you don't. And I think this is where you know, if people heard our third assistance group in 2016, they'd realise that the soul exists actually in a completely different dimensional space. That's right. Now, dimensional spaces occupy same, the same space. So yes. that's where it gets a bit confusing yes. but because it's multidimensional space. But, but in the soul union condition, you're in a different dimensional space encompassing the, the bodies in, which are in a different dimension than the soul itself. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, so I guess uh, you were sort of saying about doing this physically on Earth as opposed, you said that's more powerful than us doing it physically with our spirit bodies in the spirit world. And well, it's I was more just powerful wondering, for Earth. Oh, for Earth, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, no, I didn't mm. understand what you meant. Yeah, there. whereas, and, you know, we've already demonstrated that in the spirit world, which is why other people have been able to go through the process mm. too. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, doing it on Earth obviously is a different experience because it, people then yeah. start to see what it means. Yeah. Uh, in practice, yeah. rather than just it being an idea or concept theoretically. Mm. Um, but notwithstanding all of that, the soul doesn't really exist in the physical dimension anyway, because it exists no. in other dimensional yeah. space. Yeah. Uh, just like the spirit body doesn't exist in the physical dimension, it exists in another dimensional space. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are connections between the dimensional spaces, obviously, and mm-hmm. the soul does encompass the bodies. Mm-hmm. So, so you will see an outward expression of it, but it so, but but it, but it can't be fully illustrated without being in the soul union state. Yeah. So you can't really illustrate the soul union state to another person without them being in the soul union state. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. But you can illustrate a lot of the principles involved. Yeah. Uh, by you know by being in the condition and then demonstrating that condition in a physical way, Mm -hmm. whether that be physical body or spiritual body. Yeah, Mm. yeah. Yeah, so so Stuart's just going through that process, which is like at the beginning of that process, that's that mixture of those injuries plus the, Mm. the beginning aware. And it's difficult for him because he's just got... He's just in the process of starting to get really self-aware because mm-hmm. it's been a short period of time. Yeah. And then to then meet your soulmate soon after that. And then yeah. now you've got a, all of the concepts of your self-awareness start getting challenged that you've just accepted as well. Yeah. Um, it can be quite an overwhelming process, which Absolutely. is the reason why I didn't have a strong desire to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it's also an emotionally overwhelming process and it's very hard to represent that. Yeah. you know, when you're talking to somebody on earth. And and how would you compare that to um, meeting, so for people on earth who meet their soulmate who aren't really yet self-aware, um, it's quite a, 
or say if Matthew was in a lower condition than than Stuart. So um, where people are meeting their soulmate and they're not yet even to the point where Stuart has kind of rapidly gained a lot of acceptance of self, hasn't he? Yeah, well, it just depends, doesn't it? Every experience is different. But, um, you know, if, if they had met in the third sphere but were in the same condition, then mm -hmm. it would still feel as intense, although mm -hmm. it's... In the fifth sphere, your emotions are much more intense than they are in the third yeah. sphere. But in the third sphere, like I said, when, you, when, you, when you're in a certain place and you're feeling stretched, you're feeling stretched. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You don't sort of think about how much you're getting stretched. You know you're getting stretched. But... <laughs> well, you know you're at capacity. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, there's no such thing as capacity oh, after yeah, what, a while, is what there? It, so, no. So, um, I mean... You know that you, are, you know it's beyond your current. You beyond state, your current com comfort, comfort zones. zones. Yeah, and yeah. and so you yeah, you be, being stretched. So if you two meet and both of you are in the third sphere and you meet, then certainly there again you are beyond your comfort zones mm -hmm. uh, because. But if let's say one's in the hills and one's in the third sphere and they meet, yes, which which does happen mm -hmm. uh, because the third sphere person you know recognizes the person in the hills and so forth, and. Um, it's still confronting for both people. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just a different level of confrontation mm -hmm. because of the condition they're in. Yeah. That's all. So yeah. it's Makes always sense. going to confront you. It's not. It doesn't matter where you are. Yeah. <laughs> for Sebastian, is in the seventh, and it was confronting. So yeah. yeah. No matter where you are, it's always going to confront you. It's just it's just how you know willing you are to go through the confrontation. Obviously, if you're in the hills, you're pretty unwilling yeah. to go through the confrontation. Whereas if you're in like the third sphere, you're more willing. If you're in the seventh sphere, you're very willing mm -hmm. to go through the confrontation. Mm -hmm. If you're in the celestial heavens and uh, and you have not yet met your soulmate, well, that's pretty much impossible for the one half. You know, you, you yeah. know who it is yeah. and you've probably observed them. Yeah. You might not have physically met them because they don't want to meet you. Mm -hmm. So, but you would know who they are. Yeah. Um, it's still a confrontation process for you, even if you're in that state, in, the, in a well-developed state. Yeah, right. Because it's an opening of, of parts yeah. of yourself that you've not experienced before. But for the person who's in, the, say, the hellish state, you know, they'd be quite closed down. It's still going to be very confronting, mm. but they might not even begin even to recognise the confronting emotions yet. Yeah. Because of that, because other emotions are even worse. Yeah. You know, their rage and their anger and their fears and are much much stronger than mm. any uh, other emotion at that stage. Yeah. 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 So as you get more sensitive to emotion, you also get more sensitive to the confrontation of the state when it hit, when you meet your soulmate. Yeah. Whereas when you're in the hells and you're not sensitive to emotion, obviously you you're, you might even be aware they're your soulmate, or mm -hmm. you might not have that concept. You're just aware you're attracted to them in some mm -hmm. way, but um, but there's no thought of it as soulmates or understanding it's other half of yourself as an emotion, mm -hmm. because because you've yet to go through hundreds and hundreds of different emotions that are that are more intensely worse yeah. that you, you're you not yet sensitive to that you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, it's fascinating. Was there anything else from the discussion with Stuart that you wanted to make comment on? Because that sort of happened at the end, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, and I, I was thinking uh, with the discussion with Stuart, um, there's a whole series of things that he's obviously now discovered, but it, yeah. but it is also very, you know, I understand his dilemma because it is very difficult to share those things using words when yeah. everything is to do with an emotional experience yeah so it is hard uh, anywhere beyond the second or third sphere on the divine love path mm. it begins being quite hard to share with someone on earth mm. what's going on mm. unless the person on earth has gone through a whole lot of emotion yeah and also has a deep desire to feel their emotions yeah it's very hard to exp share but what we'll do in the coming conversations with him is we'll try to do that you know mm. obviously as he said it's my turn next time obviously <laughs> so we'll, we'll, i'll keep to that agreement well i and, think uh, he, i think he just wanted to he, just when you mentioned about um talking again he, he i felt yeah i don't mind it's just was, a, i'm yeah. just making fun yeah. and uh you know so my turn next time and then after that we might have a chat with him when we have a chat with him it would be his turn actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh we can find out a bit more about what he feels about things as well mm -hmm. mm. 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 yeah I was as I said it was a real privilege to do that and it's, yeah. it's almost like yeah. a, a mini series the Stuart series isn't it not that that's how he or I really view it but yeah, yeah. it's sort of a, 
Well, it, you know, so many is. happenings in his life, really. Yeah, isn't and that's it? a good thing about it. It, yeah. it. You know, when we first met him, you could feel what mm-hmm. he was feeling, and mm-hmm. and then you know have our discussions, and then you can feel some progress, and then you feel some more progress each time. And I think this is our third or fourth discussion, and you know you can feel the progress each time. You can feel. Yeah, and the good thing about a spirit relating what they're going through at the time yeah. is that you get a concept of it emotionally yes. when you're hearing it. Yeah. Whereas if we were just talking about what he felt before, yeah. you don't get a concept emotionally. You sort of, It's sort of like a because he's gone through the emotion, you don't get the emotion that he's going through yes. anymore Yes. Uh, because he's already gone through it and he doesn't feel it anymore not, and you can't feel it anymore because... Yeah. He's describing something that he doesn't feel anymore. Yeah. And and the beauty of having these conversations like with Sebastian and Stuart and so forth is that you get to feel what they're feeling at the time they feel it. Mm. And that's a powerful mm. thing to, to experience uh, when you're a listener of some channeling mm. because then you get to connect emotionally to what is the potentially you're going to have to go through emotionally. Yeah. And, th- and that can be very powerful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's the beauty of a lot of this channeling is it does connect to people emotionally mm. as well as helping the spirits, as well as helping people here on earth. So Yeah, I mm. hope so. Mm. Yeah, thanks for doing that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks yeah. for your time with that, babe. It's uh, two hours of getting a bit tired near the end. And oh, we'll ha- we yeah. might just have a bit of a rest now, actually, yeah. and uh, uh, for 10, 15 minutes mm. and see what else might come up and yeah. have another one. Mm. <laughs> So I'd just like to say thank you to everyone. Thanks for your time about watching that. I hopefully you enjoyed Stuart's experiences there about, so he, he's, as he said, he's basically living in the, set, in the fifth sphere now. But uh, in each sphere that you live, you get to have glimpses of others, usually from help from other people who are helping you. And, uh, and so it'd be interesting to see how you go going a few more months he's obviously very desirous of truth right mm. it's very obvious that he loves the truth and he, and that was always the case he wouldn't have ever studied me for mm. 50 years or mm-hmm. close to without loving some truth yeah so you know the fact is that that love of truth is now helping him immensely with his progress emotionally now yeah. that he's embraced his emotions so that's wonderful that's good yeah so we'll we'll talk to him more about that uh, later if we have the opportunity mm. <laughs> Yeah.